Hello, my name is Jeff Rolka. I want to thank you for checking out my video. There is a question that comes up very frequently in my live events and also just in the channel in general, which is, what's the best warm-up for me? And so I'd like to address that here. Before I do, thank you if you've chosen to subscribe. If you haven't yet, I hope that you will consider doing so now. And if you would like, there is a online, entirely free, step-by-step -step method that I have done called the AAA method and it's over at my website jeffrolka.com. It's all free, you sign up for the email list and you can have at it. Additionally, there are some downloads and also my guidebook to my YouTube channel which can help you put together workflows of the nearly 500 videos that are here on my channel. Um, all of those sales, by the way, do directly help to support the channel and all are greatly appreciated. Now, warm-ups. Let's be really, really clear here. Warm-ups are not just the things that we do before we sing a song. They are that, that's true, that's part of it. But they are technical exercises that if we work on them with diligence and attention can make us even more effective at singing the songs that we're singing. In general, for the general warm-up that we might do on a day-to-day -day basis, I think that there are a couple really, really good guidelines that can help you choose the warm-ups that are best for you. One, give some consideration to what you did yesterday. So if you sang a ton or you had a gig or you taught for however many hours and you just used your voice, you may have more phlegm on it than normal. If that is the case, your warm-up will go faster and more effective if you stick to the absolute most comfortable range of your thyroarytenoid dominant singing voice, your chest voice. Once you're there, you ease through things, work some of that phlegm loose, limber up the old vocal folds, and then start expanding outwards from there. Our warm-ups, in general, on a daily basis, I think best serve us by taking advantage of our strong suits and using those to learn about the things that are challenging us or the goals that we wish to achieve. So, for example, if your ah vowel spreads on you a little bit, then we might best get that in alignment by focusing on the vowels that we do really well with. For example, I showed you there A to A ah, and it didn't work. Maybe E and A ah would work well. E ah. That is on the channel and you can find that video to help you get those vowels to align. And then from there, you can start stringing together longer sequences of vowels. Perhaps it's your airflow that is challenging you. It pays to spend a little bit of time on your engagement, your physical alignment, and how you're using air with your voice. If it's range and registration events, those videos are there too. It's important to have aspects of the things that we are really good at and those that are part of our long-term goals, what we're looking to achieve. And those we put those in our general warm-ups that we do on a daily basis. That makes the acquisition of new skills happen in a very organic fashion. And we incorporate them into our vocal technique. And before long, we're singing through the secondo passaggio as if it never even bothered us in the first place. That's the break, just in case we're still learning those terms. A balance of phonation. How are your vowels balanced with airflow and the vocal fold adduction? Um, addressing your airflow and your breathing technique, your posture, and of course range expansion are all things that are appropriate to be part of our warm-up procedure. There is another aspect to our warm-ups and this directly relates to our performances and that is that our warm-ups, to choose the best warm-up, must reflect what is in our songs. For example, Let's say you wish to sing Counting Stars in its original key by One Republic. The range of that song is B2 to C sharp 5. That's a very wide range. Even if you put it in a comfortable range for your fosh, that's still quite a sizable 
amount of space that you have to cover. In order to warm up for that particular song, you would do your general warm ups so that you're limbered up and ready to go, like an athlete stretching and just getting all the blood flowing, as it were. And then you're going to look at the specific skills that are required to cover that range. You'll need to cover some registration event technique for the secondo passaggio. You'll also be, need to cover airflow and registration technique for the upper register event. You will also need to cover the entire range in your warm-ups. So at some point in your warm-up process, getting ready to sing that song, you'll want to cover at least an octave of space at one time. This is why there are so many warm-up videos on my channel. There are 155 dedicated warm-up videos. And amongst the other playlists that are on the channel, there are scattered warm-ups throughout all of there too. And the reason is because we are served best by being very specific about the warm-up that we choose for the song that we choose. Another example that I've used before is High and Dry. That song stops at a G sharp above middle C. However, for the male tenor, that's about a major second, give or take, maybe a minor third, above their secondo passaggio. Endurance exercises to make sure that they can maintain the kind of openness and airflow at that range will be very, very helpful in making sure that their performance of that song comes off as good as it possibly can. Furthermore, it is advisable to try to vocalize a major second to a minor third higher than the highest note that is in the song that you are singing. So again, in the case of high and dry, G sharp above middle C, so G sharp four, ideally we would vocalize to an A sharp four or possibly even B four, just to make sure that we've really gotten our expansion, engagement, and airflow happening in order to suspend and sustain that kind of range. It pays to consider the vowels and the consonants that are in the song that you are singing. If you have particularly challenging groupings of consonants, Bs, Ps, Ks, any other kind of things that really break up the airflow, working those into our vocalizations can help us be that much more effective and be that much more prepared for the song that we are gonna sing. I often get asked the question, what is the best thing to do when you have to sing very, very early in the morning? And my general response is to wake up very early, and that is true. But I realized something. In my teaching, and I teach at a wide variety of times throughout the day and evening, what I realized when I need to warm up very early in the morning, so let's say I have an eight o'clock performance or lesson, I find that I start warming up about an hour and a half in advance and I do it in stages. So I'll sing a short exercise and walk away for a minute. And then I'll do a couple more exercises and I'll walk away again. And I just come back and come back and come back and come back slowly but surely getting my body and my breath and my voice ready to sing so that I can put my best foot forward in what I do. I do hope this helps. As always, if you have questions or comments, please drop them in the comment section or uh, find me on Twitter at JT Rolka. FYI, um, a lot of the comments are slipping through the cracks as there are a lot more comments that are coming in, which is amazing and I'm very grateful for, but I want to be able to answer your questions. And if I can't find you in the comments, I can't do that. So Twitter is becoming a much more reliable way to find me and ask questions. And I would encourage you to do that. Of course, the live event is every Saturday, 6 p.m. London time here on YouTube. And I would encourage you to come there. There is always an amazing array of questions and it is a very, very good time. And a lot of fun is had by all. So thank you very much for watching. My name is Jeff. Take really good care of your voices. Enjoy singing and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye.